Hey, how's it going? So, we're kind of picking up in the middle here. I filmed a video probably, I don't know, a couple months ago, something like that. But I've got this device here called the, uh, called Lazarus the Battery Booster. Now, this is sort of an interesting device. It's designed for when your batteries are so dead that the charger won't detect them. And I've been wanting to make a video showing how this works, but you have to have a set of batteries that are so dead that the charger won't detect them. And that's not very good for batteries, so I didn't, any of the chairs I have, I didn't want to drain the batteries that dead. But luckily, we had one of the power soccer chairs come back in. Uh, with all the global, worldwide weirdness going on right now, power soccer has kind of been canceled. So most of our chairs were just sitting around. But one of them got dropped off here and the batteries were so dead that the charger wouldn't detect them. Now these batteries were new about six months ago, eh, probably closer to a year ago now. We bought 12 sets of the, uh, they were MK Power, the 60 amp hour ones. I think that's what, group 34? But I knew the batteries were good. They were just low enough that the charger wouldn't work. And that's where this thing comes in. Now, they don't sell this anymore, near as I can tell. And it's kind of a confusing device to operate. And I think I know why they don't sell it anymore. As you'll see here in this video, it's a little bit confusing to operate. And I think it kind of led people to believe that this will revive batteries that are actually damaged. Now I do mention damaged batteries a few times in this video. I'm not talking about severely damaged, I'm just talking about maybe ones that have been run dead a few too many times. But if there's any shorted cells or any bulging in the battery or anything like that, this isn't going to do any good. They have to be replaced. So again, there's a very, very narrow window where this thing is useful. And we're going to basically explore this and uh, got a few other notes about batteries that are dead and what to do with it or what to do with them or how to deal with them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Also, this was another one of those times where I was just working on stuff and then I suddenly realized after I started that, hey, I need to grab the camera and film this. This has been something I've been trying to film for a while. Uh, so I had this thing hooked up and I charged a chair for maybe three or four minutes at the most. Then I unhooked it. As you'll see here, uh, I mentioned that, but that's kind of what was going on there. But yeah, let's uh, head back a couple months and uh, see how this thing works and what other options you have if your wheelchair is so dead that the charger doesn't work anymore. Somewhat of a specialized thing today. So I get a few questions occasionally about what to do when your wheelchair's batteries are so dead that the charger doesn't work. You just plug it in and the light turns red and pretty much nothing happens. Well, there's this little device made called Lazarus the Battery Booster, and uh, it's got it's got a couple 9-volt batteries in it and an XLR charging pass-through. And what this thing's designed to do is trick the charger into thinking that the batteries are there, or if the voltage is too low, it'll make the charger turn on. Now, it's not a completely foolproof process, but if your batteries are good and they've just gone completely dead, a lot of times something like this can get you going again. So we've got an M300 out here. Uh, this is one of the soccer chairs we use in our fleet of stuff for power soccer. And the batteries in it are new as of about six months ago. Brand new MKs. But the thing sat for a while and the batteries are pretty much completely dead. And when you plug in a charger, nothing happens. So when you try to turn it on, it does, it does make a noise, but then it doesn't actually power up. So let's check our voltage here. Okay, now, full disclosure, I did actually charge up this chair a little bit earlier, so we're not getting a completely true first time use of this thing. But I figured since we have this chair here and the battery is already dead, I might as well show how this works. And I don't have any batteries that I want to do this to because it's not really good for them at all. But as you can see, we're showing 14.9 volts. And when we try to turn it on, the voltage dips way down. See, it's going down to like seven or eight volts. So that actually might be high enough for the charger to work. I tried plugging in one of the standard jumping dolphin chargers earlier. And if that sounds confusing, there's versions of chargers that look like this. They have a single, they have a single multicolor LED on the front. And there's usually an embossed logo of a dolphin jumping out of the water on the side of these. Uh, this is a slightly different model, but it's the most common one, and it's also the most likely to give you static when it comes to your batteries being too low. So let me get this hooked up. Okay, so we've got our charger connected to power, plugged into the wall, and here's the part that normally goes into the chair. 
So right now we've got flashing green, which just means the thing is on and it's in standby mode. So let's see if connecting this will actually work when the voltage is this low. So we got an orange light. It'll sit there for a minute. Start blinking. It clicks off. Okay, so in this instance, oh wait, nope, see, now we're back to green. So, this charger is a little bit different. Like I said, the other ones that have the logos on the side may operate differently, but it now thinks the chair is charged because of the way the electronics work in here. And it's not very good at detecting batteries that are eh, too low or slightly damaged. So it's sitting here showing green, which means it's not doing anything. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect up Lazarus here, and this plugs into the chair, and then our charger plugs into the bottom of that, and what you do is press and hold the start button until the charger clicks on and actually starts charging. And this little green run light here should be a little bit brighter too. We'll give it a minute here. Okay, now what that's done is it's tricked the charger into thinking that there's batteries that are dead that need to be charged plugged in as opposed to slightly damaged batteries. Now sometimes this doesn't always work on the first try and you'll have to unplug it and plug it back in again and do a few cycles of holding the start button to get it going. Like if I unplug it right now and then we plug it back in, it's probably not gonna work until we hit the button. Okay, well, in this instance, again, like I said earlier, I already charged up this chair a little bit, so we're not getting a 100% example of this. But normally, you just plug it in, hold this button until the charger stabilizes. And then let go. And we've got the green light on here. Oh, there we go. Okay, now see how it turned green? So I'm gonna hit the start button here and in theory that should trigger it to start actually charging. Some of these chargers, you have to unplug them and plug them back in for it to work. Looks like that might be the case on this one. So we'll just unplug it, plug it back in, immediately hit the start button. I'm gonna keep holding it for about 10, yeah. Okay. Like I said, this isn't an exact science. In a way some of these the way some of these chargers work, it isn't always straightforward. But usually you just want to unplug it, plug it back in, let it sit for like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, something like that, and keep doing that until this light stays orange or whatever color your charger indicates for actually charging. Okay, looks like we might be good this time. Okay, so that's staying orange. The chair is now charging. Another option, uh, if you have one of these older, or different, I guess rather, 5 amp chargers, a lot of time these things are way better at detecting batteries that have lower voltage. And sometimes these 5 amp ones will actually work even without using the battery booster. Worst case scenario, what you can do is take the batteries out of the chair, completely disconnect them, and then charge them up individually with an automotive 12 volt battery charger. Now, you have to be careful with that because a lot of times automotive chargers aren't set up for AGM or gel cell batteries. So usually what I like to do is take the batteries out, charge each one for maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes, and then put them back in the chair. And that will get the voltage up high enough to let the charger take over and then keep charging. It's really important though that if you do it that way, you either have a charger and charge them up all the way, which can take several hours, or if you're only gonna do it for a half hour, 45 minutes, charge both of them an equal amount and then put them back on the chair so they don't get out of balance. Okay, now as you can see here, this charger thinks that the battery is at 85%. That's when it alternates between red and green. So when it starts doing that, I'm gonna unplug it again. Start it up one more time. We shouldn't have to hit the button this time necessarily. As these batteries start charging up and the chemical reaction starts happening in there, this charger at some point will recognize that they are actually dead and do like a full 10 hour charge. Because with these 60 uh, amp hour 
60 amp hour? Yeah, I think they're 60 amp hour MKs. This could easily take 10, 11, 12 hours to charge the tear completely. Now, to my knowledge, that battery booster device is not sold anymore. It was called Lazarus the Battery Booster, or I think it had a different name on it. I see it on a website that has it listed for sale, but you can't actually buy it. So I'm actually going to look at making my own version of this uh, fairly inexpensively and uh, seeing if it works the same. And again, like I said, it's not an end-all be-all, and it's a very rare situation that this will actually help you, but... Honestly, the best way is to take the batteries out and charge them up individually with an automotive battery charger. Quick note about using an automotive battery charger. The one thing you've got to be careful with, well, there's lots of things, obviously, with charging batteries, but if you're using an automotive battery charger and you want to charge up the batteries completely or all the way, you have to make sure that that charger has a gel or AGM battery mode in it. Because if it's just a normal manual, non-automatic battery charger, like one of those ones that's on wheels that you see them using at the dealership and auto shop and they put out like 80 amps or something. If you have one of those, that's not gonna work. You're gonna need something a little bit smaller. Actually, hang on, I've got one. Washing machines making draining sounds. So this is a Schumacher battery charger. I know it says die hard, but Schumacher makes, uh, I don't know, smart chargers, things like that. If you look real close here, we've got some options. We've got regular deep cycle, AGM slash gel, and six volt. Now, this charger has the proper modes or, or voltage curves to handle gel and AGM batteries. Most of them are sealed, so you don't want to charge them at a very high rate. Maybe 6 amps, 12 amps at the very most. Uh, honestly, I, I probably wouldn't go above 6 amps is what you want to run these at. And if you don't have a charger like this, or one with different charging modes, you don't want to use an automotive battery charger. In that case, what you can do is basically hook up your charger whether it's manual, automatic, or whatever, hook it up, set a timer for, let's say, 20 minutes. Charge the battery for exactly 20 minutes, unhook it, hook up the other battery, charge that one for exactly 20 minutes, and then put them back in the chair. What that's gonna do is raise the voltage of the batteries enough so that the charger for your chair will be able to detect them. And in theory, it won't get them out of balance. Because when you've got two batteries like this and they're charging in series, they, they can get out of balance fairly easily. Um, and again, this is, uh, this is sort of obscure one-off situations. I mean, it does happen occasionally, but you know, if you've got a chair that has good batteries in it and you can't charge the thing, it's no good. So this is sort of a, a backup step, I guess, as it were to get you, get you rolling again. So preferably if you have a charger like this that can handle, or that washing machine, <laughs> if you have a charger like this that can handle the chemistry of an AGM or gel battery, go ahead and plug them in. Charge them up, it'll take like, I don't know, six hours or more. And charge each battery completely till this thing says it's full and turns off. Or, even if you don't want to wait that long, um, you can use one of these or a manual, normal battery charger that's not set up for gel or AGM for X amount of time. Usually anywhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes is a good amount of time that won't damage the batteries even if you're using another charger. And you want to keep the amperage fairly low again, so like maybe six, eight amps, somewhere in there. If you start getting up towards 12 amps and more, then the batteries are really dead and they're not gonna be happy about all that voltage going in there. And then also, since they're sealed, they might try and off-gas and cause more damage. So, I don't know if this has been more help or more con con confusation. <laughs> Is that even a word? But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Now, since I have it, I'm actually gonna use this five amp charger. I'm not gonna leave this Dolphin charger connected overnight because I still don't really trust them. Even with batteries that are in perfect shape, um, they don't necessarily have the proper charging modes or cycles. And I know that little five amp one is gonna do the job correctly. There is a charger that Permobile has. It's one that I made a video about a while back and I was pretty annoyed with the design of it. Let's see, do I have one out here? I think it's actually inside the house. So this here, is one of the chargers I actually like pretty well. It's a terrible design because the charging jack comes out of the wrong side and the power input goes on the opposite side. So you wind up having to wrap the cords around it. But this is a very good five mode charger and these things are really good at taking care of older and damaged batteries. And a lot of times these things will pick up batteries that are super low voltage and uh, actually charge them up properly. 
And also batteries that are just getting a little bit older that don't necessarily hold a charge as long as they should. I've started charging them with one of these chargers and it kind of rejuvenates them. So those jumping dolphin chargers, while technically they do work, they're not the best thing for getting maximum life out of your batteries. Uh, and it is nice that Permobil is using chargers like that now. I believe they're still shipping those with a lot of the newer chairs. Okay, it looks like we're still charging out here. We've got the solid orange light. And when it's actually charging, you should be able to feel just a little bit of heat in the cable and or the charger should be getting warm when it's doing bolt charging. But I think we're good to go now. This can just stay plugged in for the next 10 to 12 hours. And it is good to charge it for, you know, maybe 12 hours or something like that before you try and use it again. Just because these batteries were low enough that um, uh, we're almost doing an initial charge on them again. So you got to leave them connected even after the light turns green. Like once that turns green, it's in float mode and you need four to five hours in float mode for them to get all the way back up to their proper capacity. So there you go. That's more of just an informational thing about some products that do exist or used to exist maybe. And uh, some things you can do if your batteries do get so low that your charger doesn't recognize them anymore. The ideal method, like I keep saying, is to take them out of the chair and charge them up, then put them back in. But that's not always viable. That's a lot of work for me to do. I've got really good uh, hand and arm function, but it's not something I enjoy doing at all. All right, this chair has been sitting out here overnight and it looks like we've got a full charge on it. We've got a green light. So yeah, um, I'm probably gonna run around in this thing just a little bit and uh, yeah. I'm probably gonna run around in this thing a little bit and drain the batteries just a tiny bit, plug it into charge again. And uh, yeah, I think we should be good to go on this thing. So there you go. Hopefully this was some helpful information as to what you can do if your batteries get so dead that the charger doesn't detect them or you plug it in and nothing happens. Again, pretty obscure use case scenario, but I do occasionally get questions about it. And I happen to have that soccer chair here where I could illustrate this thing functioning. But again, if you take the batteries out of the chair and you're using automotive battery chargers, the key to it is charging both the batteries at the same charge rate for the exact same amount of time. When I talk about batteries getting out of balance, that's when one battery is more charged than the other. And since they're charging in series, if that balance starts to get, you know, off kilter too much, one battery is going to get overcharged and the other is going to get undercharged. Which is also why it's very important to use two of the same batteries. Same brand, same model, and as close to the same build date as possible. Swapping out one battery from your chair for something of a different capacity, or even the same model and capacity but a few years older or newer, is going to result in one or both of the batteries getting damaged pretty quickly. I mean, if you swap in something of a different brand, uh, you're not going to get four or five months out of it before both the batteries get damaged because when they get out of balance, things don't charge correctly. Also, there are some people that say it is good to take the batteries out of your chair and individually charge them fully with a proper automatic like AGM charger occasionally. I've honestly never had issues with that. I mean, it's not necessarily going to hurt anything, but it is a lot of work and a lot of screwing around. And all the chairs I've had here, I've always had the same batteries, the same build date, everything in there. And this steampunk chair right here, um, this thing has batteries in it from 2012. Now, they don't have the most capacity uh, like they used to, but they're still rocking. They'll last me a day, no problem. So there is something to be said for the quality of the batteries. MKs are always the best. MK power, it's the way to go. They cost more money, but they're gonna last a lot longer. But always charge your chair every day it's used, plug it in all night, regardless of what the, the battery indicator on the chair says, regardless of what the indicator lights on the charger say, plug it in every night for like eight to 10 hours or however long you're asleep and that's gonna get you the best battery life and basically the best service life out of your batteries. But yeah, there you go. If you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, let me know if you've had any other issues with batteries or if you've gotten stuck and how you've gotten out of the situation. I'm always curious to hear other people's stories. I get messages all the time and uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons I make videos. I like to chat with people and uh, have a conversation down below. So anyways, hopefully all this helps and uh, I'll catch you soon.